Well, good morning, St. James friends and family and faithful fellowship from wherever you might be at the safety and the comfort of your home. We are now again in uh, week two of, of virtual worship. Uh, again, I uh, pray that you and yours are safe as we live into this season of being safer at home in the order that has been given down. Uh, thankfully for the wonder of technology, we are able to be able to worship together in this. Uh, and in fact, we have actually recorded this on Thursday and Friday. So I will actually probably be with you online today. Uh, but we are doing all these in an effort to keep us safe as we follow the guidelines from our leaders. Uh, just a huge uh, message of thanks and a great shout out to all of our worship leaders and the tech people who have helped to make this uh, put, be put together. It has been late nights, but we want to offer a chance for us to be able to worship together even though we can't be together. And that's the beauty of this time. So again, just a couple of uh, announcements for us. We will be doing this virtual worship through Easter and likely into a couple weeks beyond that. I want to let you know that the church offices are going to be closed. All the staff are going to be working remotely. Uh, so we'll be monitoring the phones here, uh, but the easiest way to get in touch with us is by emailing to us or calling us directly. And at least this will go through probably April 15th, if not to the end of April. We'll just wait to hear back. Uh, but this does not mean that we are not here at church. And we're not worshiping. It only means that church has left the building. So thank you for the ministry that we've been doing together. And so even though we may not be together, we are still connected together. So right now in your feeds, just to be able to do a little bit of connection, uh, just give a quick hello to everybody. Just right in there, hey everyone, this is blank and give your name. Uh, and you'll probably see me even posting in here, but a great way for us to get to know names of each other as we go along. But uh, let me give us some preparation as we go into worship here again this morning. Just again, this is worship time. This is a time for us to be present with God. And so engage in this experience even, even when you're at home. When we are singing our praise songs, I invite you to stand if you're able and sing along with us. Sing so your neighbors next door can hear you. Uh, when those times of prayer, we invite you to bow your heads, fold your hands if you like to. If you want to get on your knees to pray, uh, that is a sign of coming before God there. Uh, we're going to be mindful that we'll be taking an offering later on in the service. So if you want to open up another web browser to the St. James website uh, or just prepare for that in your hearts. But along the way, feel free to give comments and engage with each other in conversation as the, ser as the sermon and the, uh, the worship service go along there. My friends, again, welcome to worship today. Let me remind us of the importance of corporate worship together. That yes, it pains God's hearts that we can't be in one place together because God truly inhabits the praises of God's people. But the power is that God praises, inhabits the praises no matter where we are. That Jesus Christ himself said that we do not need to praise in a temple or on a mountain, but the true worshipers of God worship in spirit and in truth together. Let me offer this out of Psalm 147 as we enter into our time of worship. The psalmist writes, Praise the Lord! How good it is to sing praises to our God! How pleasant and fitting to praise him! The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. That is us. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. My friends, today we're going to be looking at the, the theme of when the rubber meets the road of our faith in our life together, knowing that we are all in hard times here, but God has something to offer for us to journey forward with him. Let me offer this word of prayer and then we will continue in our worship together. Let us pray. Dear holy and almighty and gracious God, you who hold the whole universe in your hands, who has numbered the very hairs on our heads, who is God even in the midst of such a struggling and trying and deadly time. Lord, we thank you in this place that by your grace we are drawn to worship, that we are invited to this place by you who is here with us and by your spirit binds us and unites us together. So Lord, bless this worship that we offer to you. Bless us as it gives us the strength to go out into this world in whatever ways we can to serve you and bring you glory. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names, and it is spirit that gives us life to live. All God's people said, amen and amen. So let us prepare our hearts for worship this morning. Let 
us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. God has bridge again. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Oh, we are of heaven. You conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Come clap with us like this. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my doom till I met him. I was free.
I needed rescue. My sin was heavy, but my chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I breathe. I have a future. My eyes are open. When you call my name, hey, I ran out of that space. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Tay Tay, hit it! believe that this morning I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of
I'm a child. Sing it with me. I am a child of God. One more time. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. Well, dear friends, what a powerful morning of worship it has been, even if we are worshiping in our living rooms, that we are worshiping this God who is present in our lives and gives us the power to live them for him. Again, we are in this series that we are calling Crossroads, this series that we recognize when all the roads of our lives lead to the cross of Jesus, that through the cross of Jesus, even that place of death and suffering for him, that we, when we follow through Jesus, they lead to true life. And so my friends, as a reminder, we are in the middle of Lent. And so we have gone through this series already. When we started on Ash Wednesday, realizing that confession is the way to clear the way of the roads for Jesus to invite us into faith. That this life of faith, it may be a narrow road. It does not look like what the world might offer to us. But when we accept Jesus' invitation, his work to help us to cross that chasm from the old life that we lived to the new life he provides, that we are put on on a journey that is true life for us. We saw that God gives us clear guidance for that, that he is not just our eternal GPS, he is the one through his word and his spirit gives us step by step, year by year, the lives we are to live. We saw that when we focus on Jesus Christ, he helps us to live perfect lives of love centered on God and centered on serving others. And last week we had a powerful sermon preached by Zach Grant, our director of Special Connections, about what it is about Jesus calling us in prayer for those who we journey journey with together on this journey of faith. And so, my friends, I think even again, timely in all of these as they have been, this week is just as timely for us. The theme of this week's sermon is when the rubber meets the road. It is that place in our lives when things get real. And today, it's getting real, isn't it? When we're stuck in our homes, when we're under order to not go out, when the rubber meets the road of our lives, those places when on the journey of life, our circumstances, whatever we might go through, test the faith that we hold on to. The places where our faith needs to be more than just something in our mind, just something we've read on a page, even things we've committed to memory. No, they they need to be real for us. When life gets real, we need our faith to get real too. Anybody there with me today? The bottom line for us today that I want us to hold on to as we make this journey together is that when the journey of our life and when the journey of our faith get real, that's when Jesus gets real for us. And in that moment of truth, in that place there, the truth in the moment are things like this, that when the pain of our lives gets personal, Jesus gets personal because Jesus takes it personally as well. Or that when the cost of following Jesus may seem high, it just means the value of this life is far greater than when we follow him. But when the storms of our life rage, no matter where we might be, Jesus is the one whose presence brings power into that place. So my friends, today we're going to look at some scriptures out of Matthew's gospel. Again, this is one of the four gospels that recorded the life of Jesus and gives us means to see how he preached it, but also how he lived it. And so we're going to look at three stories of Jesus interacting with other people in miraculous ways as they were journeying on their life. And the selection that we have today comes from Matthew chapter 8. So you can prepare yourself for that. If you have a Bible at home, open up to Matthew's gospel. We're in the 8th chapter. Uh, But I want to just lead us in with what was going on in Matthew's gospel up to this point. See, in chapters 5 through 7, we have what was called the Sermon on the Mount. This is Jesus Christ after he started his ministry. He went up on a mountainside and thousands of people sat down with him and he preached his first sermon. Three chapters of what it was to live this faith now newly revealed in him who is before him. He taught us how we are to live our lives with potent commands and with powerful promises. But right away in, verses, in chapters 8 and 9, we see Jesus living this out. Jesus revealing the power, just demonstrating all what this God has for us and for us to receive through miracles and through experiences with others on the road. So my friends, we're going to pick up this scripture this morning in the 8th chapter of Matthew. And we're going to be in the 14th verse, reading through the, tw- the 27th verse. Here are these words from Matthew's gospel. When Jesus came into Peter's house... He saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. 
I told you these are timely words for us, right? So Jesus touched her hand and the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. Jesus replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. My friends, again, for us, this is the word of God. For us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So, dear friends, if you're in that place when the rubber is meeting the road of your life, and I know all of us are struggling and suffering with this coronavirus, let us pray as we enter into the word and let it enter into our lives this morning. Won't you bow with me in prayer at this time? Dear holy and almighty God, you who have given us word, not just to live by, but to see lived in Jesus Christ. Lord, with all the thoughts and the things in our hearts that might be swirling at this time, we place them before you, and we pray that they might be holy and acceptable unto you. You who are our rock, the one constant we can stand on, even when the world seems to be falling apart around us, but you who are our redeemer, that takes all of those, those dark, bad places and puts us on a road of true life. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus Christ, and in his Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So again, dear friends, when the rubber meets the road. We see again in this story, in these three stories, three folks who, when the rubber is meeting the road of their lives, when they meet Jesus on that road, suddenly the lives change completely. And I think it has so many things for us to hold on to as we are journeying on our lives and those lives that we might live when the rubber meets the road and things get real for us. So I'm just going to use these three stories to talk about different ways that when the rubber meets the road in our lives, how Jesus meets us there. And so the first one, when we look at this first story of Jesus going to Peter's house, we have this I want us to hold on to, that when the rubber of our personal faith meets the road of personal pain. Again, in the midst of Jesus healing all the people, now this story gets personal with Peter's mother-in-law. Some of us, again, of course, as Peter goes, or Jesus goes into this house of Peter and it's the mother-in-law getting sick, some of us would say, oh, well, mother-in-law's getting sick. Well, you know, that's not too bad. But, uh, but for Peter, this got real serious, real quick. This got real personal, real quick, too. For all of us, life isn't really real. Our faith isn't really real sometimes until it gets personal. Again, I've shared with you what it has meant for me when my mom got sick and died. I was in the middle of seminary. I was studying the how to be a, a preacher. I was studying the word, but, but when my mom got sick, it got real. It got personal. And that's where Jesus became personal for me as well. For us, when we were there, when my brother was diagnosed with leukemia, and journeying with him through months of painful surgery of bone marrow transplant and, and praying that it would be taken by his body and, and recovered. It got real in faith and the prayers that I was lifting up for him. And now my brother who's suffering with colon cancer, starting his chemo treatment, now again, it's getting real because it's getting personal. You know, even just this week, Alini, our traditional worship uh, coordinator, lifted up that her cousin down in Brazil has contracted the coronavirus. For all of us here, it's become the first one where this really has become personal. Please be praying for him. Paulo is in the hospital. He's in a medically induced coma to try to get his breathing and the infection down. Be praying for Alini. It's personal for her. Sometimes, friends, the rubber hits the road of our lives when it hits us personally. But that's the hope that we have in this story. 
Again, Jesus knew Peter well. This was one of his closest disciples, one of the first ones that he called. And when he would go off away from the other 12 disciples, he would often take Peter and just James and John. This was one of his closest disciples. He would often stay at the home of Peter. He knew Peter's mother well. And in a life where he was traveling around, she likely played mom to him too. This got personal for Jesus in that space. It was personal for Jesus for Peter's sake. But as Jesus healed his mom and then went out and healed all these other people, releasing them from the demons and with the word driving them out of their lives and healing them simply by touch, it was personal for Jesus in all of those touches as well. Again, Jesus is fulfilling ancient prophecy hundreds of years prior that has been lifted about to say who God is and who God was in Jesus. He takes up our infirmities. He bears our diseases. In Jesus, God takes our pains, our hurts, our illnesses personally. Whatever we might be going through, when the rubber of our personal faith meets the road of our personal pain, trust and know that God is the one of your healing because it is personal and painful for God too. In that moment of truth, the truth in that moment is that Jesus takes our pain personally. That is what the cross is all about. He went to that place of ultimate pain and suffering because he knew how personal it was to us. He, in that place, took all of that upon himself to give us the ultimate healing of our souls that we would be released from all of our sins, forgiven by God, and given eternal life in him. Jesus, the one who is able to heal us physically, spiritually, and for the whole of our lives. That is what we have in Jesus Christ. That when the rubber of our personal faith meets the road of personal pain, Jesus is there because he takes it personally as well. And so my friends, let me offer this as a reminder that this means that this whole faith thing is based in personal relationship. Again, if Jesus is willing to personally take that pain for you, if he is willing to personally go to the cross for you, he wants to make it personal with you. So today, even right now, wherever you might be sitting, let it get real. Get real with Jesus and get personal with him. Pray a prayer to accept him and accept that relationship. Say that it is no longer about things that you've read on a page. Be willing to confess your sins and let Jesus be the one who is your ultimate healer. You need faith to be more than head games. You need faith to be more than words on a page. Let it get real in your life by getting real with Jesus in your life. Because Jesus wants to heal you. He wants to because it is personal for him. He is aching and groaning to save your life. And Jesus is offering you that personal relationship right here now. He's the ultimate healer of your soul, of your body, and the whole of your life. Amen? So seek me out after service. Send me an email, phone me if you need to, to share in that prayer together and get you on this journey. Because it is such an amazing journey when we start following Jesus Christ. But it's also a challenging journey. And I think as we look at the next story here and we consider when the rubber meets the road, that's where I think we are drawn to next in our own lives. And I'll simply offer this phrase when we consider that, that phrase of rubber meeting the road, that when the rubber of our devotion meets the road of discipleship. Again, in that second story, we have Jesus interacting with this teacher of the law and another disciple. And Jesus is getting real with them. And Jesus is getting real with us as followers, as disciples. Again, this personal relationship, it is the key to the life in Jesus Christ, but following Jesus is the way we live. So let's look back at Peter's mother-in-law. Again, in verse 15, Jesus touched her hand, the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on him, began to serve him. That's the response, that when we are healed by Jesus Christ, we serve, we follow but that's where it gets challenging for us, isn't it? Friends, I know with you, I want all the healing. I want Jesus to get personal. I want all of that. But following Jesus, especially when it's not easy to do, I don't know how much I wanted that. In fact, when we look back at this prophecy out of Isaiah that is mentioned in the previous verses of Jesus who takes our infirmities and carries our diseases, here's what the prophet actually had to say about how people responded to the one God is going to send to heal us. Isaiah 53 starts with these words. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He is talking about this Messiah, Jesus, growing up before God. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. 
He was despised and rejected by others. He was a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried out our diseases. We just held on to that promise, right? Surely he has done this. Yet we, we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. Friends, hearing that prophet speak into our lives and our response sometimes to the call of Jesus might be summed up in another phrase. When the going gets tough in following Jesus, is our devotion to him tough enough to follow him in that place? Right? Look at these examples and see if there are stories that we might connect to. First, there's the example of the scribe, this teacher of the law who goes to Jesus in verse 15. And this is someone who knew the law. They transcribed it. They were teaching it to others. So he knew the words of the page. And he was going to seek Jesus. He wanted to follow Jesus. And it's intriguing in the scriptures that Jesus actually talks to him about it. Typically, Jesus, his response to those who knew the law and knew it really well, those religious people, was one to put them down because they were not living in love, a love that calls us to follow. And so when this teacher of the law wants to follow Jesus, Jesus responds by giving him just the reality of the cost of it, that there is no gain in it at all. Because that's what this teacher reveals for us, I think. That we can know these words on this page. We can gain knowledge in our knowing, can't we? We can gain status by being a Christian. We can gain prestige in our lives by saying we're a good person. Have you ever felt like you're in all of this faith thing just to look good? Just to be able to tell your friends, hey, I go to church every Sunday. Have some power in your life. To follow Jesus as he responds to this teacher, like he responds to us in that place where we want it to be more about us than him is to remind them and to remind us that there is nothing for me in this world, Jesus says. I have no home. I have no possessions. I am nothing. And that's what we who follow him are like as well. Rather, we give up all these things to have nothing to lift up Jesus to the highest heights. Because when Jesus, who became a servant for all, died for all on that cross, he became the greatest Lord of all. And we are called to follow in that place as well, that it is not about power, prestige, or how our lives look, but following one to that cross as well. And that's where Jesus goes to that next step with this other disciple, isn't it? Not only is it about following and not having possessions, now it's about giving up other things in our lives. This disciple who says, I want to go and bury my father. Most scholars would say that likely his father had not just died. Rather, he's just waiting for his father to die. And so he's kind of putting this off, this invitation from Jesus to follow him, and even his desire to follow him, he wants to put it off to take care of what he is devoted to more in his life. But Jesus gets to the bottom of it, makes it real, gets to where the rubber meets the road for all of our faith. Our ultimate devotion, if they are to things of this world, no matter how valuable they might be to us, they will cost us everything in the end. No, Jesus, Jesus to this disciple, to all of us, says the same words to the disciples back then. Let all who call themselves my disciples deny themselves, pick up their cross, and follow me. This journey of our faith as disciples, it is a difficult and challenging one. But when the rubber of our devotion meets the road of our discipleship, in that moment of truth, the truth in that moment is this, that when following Jesus becomes costly to us, that's what becomes truly valuable for us in our lives. That's where we find life when we are experiencing our faith costing us something. So my friends, kudos for getting online this morning to worship. You could have not done this time, but you have gotten online. That is costly to you, but it is extreme value. Kudos for taking on our ministry of connection even when we are disconnected in this place. Kudos for giving to God in a time such as this when we are struggling financially for the ministry of the work to go forward. Kudos for us who are disciples that we are not in the sanctuary because it means we are all able to now go out and follow Jesus Christ. The disciples have left the building, amen? That is what we are called to, dear friends. So let us, let the rubber of our devotion meet the road of our discipleship by one's willing and able to follow Jesus wherever he might lead us because it is such a beautiful life when we do so. And it may be a beautiful life but it is not guaranteed to always be easy and smooth. And that is the final thing for us to hold on to. 
And I'll use this rubber meeting the road analogy again, that when the rubber of our trust meets the stormy roads of our life. Again, we're in this last story here of of verses 23 to 27, that the disciples follow Jesus into this boat and they travel onto this lake with him, that even though they are the disciples and they have Jesus right there, the storm still comes. My friends, we are in a storm, are we not? And it's a storm that's affecting us all whether we're non-believers to the most devout believers who have lived their life for Jesus the whole time, we're all in this storm. And even the best of us in our faith go through other storms as well. All of us in this place together, the storms might happen. But the promise is there in it all. Let me give you a quick story to kind of give you a framework for what that promise might look like. Here's a picture of my dad's boat, Fantasy Two. You probably see it in images behind me as I'm working from home and sharing videos. It's the, grow, the boat we grew up on, on the rivers up in St. Croix. And the St. Croix River, I come to find out, is a little bit like the Sea of Galilee that the disciples were on with Jesus, where storms came in and they were furious. Now, my dad would listen to weather reports. He would put out some more anchors in preparation for them. But there was one weekend when my aunt and uncle traveled up from Iowa, and sure enough, there was a storm that came up on that river. So my dad put out some more anchors, but as night fell down, uh, it, it came down hard. The boat was rocking all over the place, and we were bouncing in the waves. And my aunt was sitting up in the, in the, di- in the dining room area, and she was just a nervous wreck. Me and my two younger brothers, we were actually sleeping in the back because it kind of rolled us to sleep. But but we came out there because we heard her talking to my mom. And as she was sharing about being so nervous about the boat sinking and all that kind of stuff, all we had to say was, look, the waves are actually pulling the anchors deeper into the ground. Do you hear that, my friends? That when the storms of our lives get really, really strong, Jesus becomes an even stronger anchor for us. When you go through the storms that you're in, when the rubber of your trust in God meets the stormy roads of life, do you put your trust in Jesus in that place? In that moment of truth, here are the truths that we have in that moment. Jesus, he is in the boat with the disciples. He is in the boat with you right now. When that cross was the place where he identifies with all the storms of our lives. But he is the one, like those anchors, who gives us something stronger than them. Amen? But he might be in the back just waiting for you to wake him up. Maybe it's been a time where you have not counted on Jesus. You need to go meet him right now. But hear his word to the disciples and to you. Even if you have little faith, fear not in this place, for I am stronger. Cast all your anxieties on Jesus, the scriptures say, for he is strong enough to carry them, and he is the only one who can calm them. Isn't that powerful in this last verses you hear that Jesus, by his voice, calms the waves in the seas? Maybe you need Jesus to speak into the anxieties, the waves and the seas and the wind of your life right now and let his voice be the voice, the only voice that calms everything for you. Friends, let me close this section with Psalm 62 two. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, and I shall never be shaken. My friends, do you hear these hope? this hope that we have in Jesus Christ, who is with us in our lives, especially when the rubber meets the road. So my friends, when the rubber of your personal faith meets the road of personal pain, in that moment of truth, hold on to that truth in that moment, that when it gets personal for us, it gets personal for Jesus, and he is the one to heal us personally. When the rubber of our devotion meets the costly road of our discipleship. In that moment of truth for us, the truth in that moment is that when following Jesus starts to get costly for us, it becomes truly value for us to live in. And then finally, when the rubber of our trust meets the stormy roads of our lives, in that moment of truth, the truth in that moment again is that Jesus is with you in this storm. That Jesus is there waiting for you to wake him up. And Jesus is the one word, the anchor that we can trust in, the word that will calm it all for us. My friends, this is the gospel message for us today. That as we journey on this road of faith toward the cross of Jesus Christ, when the rubber meets the road for us, that Jesus Christ is the one who makes it real and makes it blessed, no matter how tough it might be, to know that we can trust in him and he calms it all for us. Amen and amen. So this is, my friends, a moment of truth for you. Again, if this is a time for you to get personal with Jesus Christ, let's have that prayer together. Connect with me, and if you want it to be more than just something in words on a page, but truth in your heart, let that be the time here and now.
Leave a comment in the comment section about how this might have touched you. When you go back and consider all those things, the struggles that you might be going through, what are the truths that you can hold on to today for whatever you might be going through? And finally, how might you be the one? You be the one to be the presence of Jesus Christ for others in your life. That you can be the anchor that they can trust in because you trust in Jesus, the true anchor. That you can speak words of life and peace into this world that is so much in chaos and storm. And that you can live as one blessed by being blessed by God. Take care, my friends, and God bless. Let us pray our time out of this sermon as we prepare our hearts for our offering. Dear holy and gracious God, we thank you again that you are here with us, that when it gets real in our lives, you are real for us. So Lord, may we hold on to the truths in that moment of truth, that you're a God who is our rock to stand on, that you're a God who takes our pain personally and heals it for us personally, that you are the one who calls us to a challenging life, but a valuable life, that you are the one that we can trust in in all these ways. In the name of Jesus Christ, who makes this real, and in your spirit that makes it real in us, all God's people said, amen and amen. So dear friends, in response to this word and all that God offers to us in it, we are called to this moment of offering in our, in our life and in this time of worship. So we're going to take this offering right now as the as the praise team is going to get ready to share with us a song that we will sing together. Again, God is offering all these things for us to be able to hold on to in faith, especially in stormy time. But he has called us to be the church in a time such as this. Church has not ended. It has just got more busy, I think. We're out doing more ministry, connecting with more people in a time like this. So your offerings are part of God's glory and God's glory work through us. So again, just to help us prepare our time for giving, uh, if you are on your computer, you can go and open up another tab in the website to our church website, stjamestampa.org. Click on the giving tab. You'll be taken to our online giving portal. Uh, you can also use your smart device by texting to the number 77977, the, simply the words SJ Tampa. You'll receive a text back with a hyperlink that will take you to that place, same giving portal. If you desire to make checks, you can make them out to the church, mail them to the church. We'll still pick them up here uh, for delivery. But let me encourage you in this time, this is a great time for us to take advantage of all the great resources of online that we have. This is our offerings that we have as a church, connecting with you and others in relationship, doing Zoom calls for pastoral care, uh, for our Right Now Media online discipleship resource, but also as the ministries that we're a part of. And so we're going to take a special offering this weekend as well to support the Florida United Methodist Children's Homes. These are ministries of all of us, 600 United Methodist churches here in Florida, connected through our conference for two different campuses that, home, that are home to over 200 children who have been displaced in their lives by either abuse, neglect, or lack of care. And so in these campuses, we are able to give them a safe place, a place where they get to know Jesus for themselves and a means to actually have a life. So we're taking a special offering for that. If you go on in the giving portal, you could actually select down the list for the children's home and make a special offering for that as well. So my friends, let me give this invitation to our, our offering. An invitation if you're a guest. We don't want to burden you if you're visiting with us for the first few times here, but we want to invite you to be a part of the ministries that we're about. And we're doing that simply by giving you the $10 invitation. If you want to make just a $10 donation to the church, you and the hundreds of others, that will be a great, a great part of our ministries. But for those of us who are disciples, who are members of the church and followers of Jesus Christ, let us hear God's invitation that it might be costly for us, but when we give extravagantly for God's work to be done in this world. He is able to make it of such great value for the ministries that the church is doing and the lives that we're able to touch, the, the people that we're able to serve and the ones we're able to save in the name of Jesus Christ. So my friends, let me give us prayer into our offering and you can give your offering as we sing the last song together. Let us pray. Dear holy and almighty God, again, you who have offered us all these things in life in Jesus Christ, may you bless this offering back to you. May it be multiplied for the good work that we need to do in a time such as this. Bless us in our giving, knowing that it is a struggle. But may we find the value when we give to you and your ministry of what you're able to do in the world through it. 
We thank you for all of this in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in the power of his spirit, all God's people said, amen and amen. So let us prepare to give and sing our our way out of service here today. Hi, my name is Jerome. I've uh, been here at the children's home for about a year. Just from the very first moments of my existence, I had to learn to hide or portray myself as something different, uh, mainly because I had to raise my siblings. Here, I've pretty much learned more independent skills uh, because I'll be, in almost two years, I'll be 18. So I've joined the runner club and we've been doing 5Ks. Uh, Acting for me is another one of my outlets and reading for me is like stepping into another world. Ever since I was little, the Bible has pretty much been my textbook. So I may know all the right answers, but I'm still early on in my walk with God. When I get finished with all the stuff I need to get finished with, I'm going to go to Marines. To all donors, I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart that you are donating to this children's home. and. It has provided us with food, clothing on our backs, a very safe environment for us to stay and for us to mature and to be productive in all walks of life we may enter. Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.
his fame be upon you in a thousand generations. Your family, your children, their children, their children, may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations. Your family, your children, their children, their children, may his favor. Dear friends, these are the words of benediction and blessing that God gives us on our lives. It is such a blessing to simply sing them over and over again, to tr hold on to that truth, that when we get to those moments of truth in our lives, the truth of God is far greater. The truth that God takes our pain personally and heals it in Jesus Christ. The truth that God calls us to a costly life, but a life of such extreme value over anything else. The truth that God is the one to calm the storms, even the storm that we're in now, and invites us to live a life of ones who can speak into this world as well. So let me offer this word of blessing and benediction for your lives, wherever you might go in this week, that may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. And as you turn to God in this time, waking him up even in this storm, may you find peace in your hearts and your souls knowing how much you are loved by God. And take that love, the love that this world so desperately needs, into your life and into your world. Go from your north and your south and your east and to the west as disciples and followers of Jesus Christ, sharing the love of Christ with this world and in his spirit, bringing God's kingdom to come and God's glory in it all. Take care, y'all. Be safe and God bless.